it was wondrous. I, I tell you, I I went through that book of Genesis and Hebrew and restudied it all. I tried to bring a lot of things out to you to uh, to give you the depth. And we're going to go into the Exodus now, and we're going to do the same thing in Exodus. We're going to look at some things. We're going to look at it deeply. Maybe you will learn something. Wally, did you learn something in Genesis? Well, yes. Sister Andino, you can't help but learn something. Yeah. I, if, when you look at it from the original language and you look at it in depth, you're going to learn something. I know you'll learn something if you're young in the faith. But I want to teach the older ones too. I'm trying to teach the young ones and the older ones at the same time. And I'll tell you something, there was some fantastic stuff, especially in the prophecy in chapter 40, 47, 48, and 49. And the prophecy, because it goes all the way through the history of mankind. Joseph's, or Jacob's prophecy covered it all. And I, you get in there and you start studying those, and that's something you can just go back over that tape over and over and over again. And I hope that you can do the same thing to this tape today. We're running a little bit behind today, but we've had fun. Brother Wally, thank you for bringing those songs to us. And uh, we do appreciate our youngster in here. He's our youngest member and our oldest members also. We, we we're covering all of you. I'm trying to preach to all of you at the same time. That's the way they used to do it a long time ago in church. By the way, Wally, in the children's services, they still do those songs. Is that right? right? Still today, right here, in the children's services, they do those. And the young people, they still... Uh, saying Jesus loves me, and what else, uh, Sister Andino? You probably and your daughter. Every day with Jesus, yeah. Sweeter than the day before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the songs that we sang when we were young, they're still singing those songs. They haven't improved on them much. The teenagers is the one you have problems with, not the young people. <laughs> they're they're the ones that's not quite satisfied. All right, what page are you on? Chapter fourteen and number nine. Where are we? Yeah. Which one? 43. 43? 43. 43. Okay, you're on page 43, I'm on page 48, so our pages are different. Okay? Number nine. Number nine. While in the desert in the land of Midian. All right, Midian. Moses met the daughters of who? All right, Exodus 2. It's where we are. They're in Exodus, the second chapter. So, all right. While in the in the desert, in the land of Midian, let's think about the land of Midian now. What about Midian? What does Midian mean? Huh? Midian. Sister Anne, do you know what Midian means? Anybody here know what Midian means? It it something about night. It means contention. The land of arguing. The land of contention. All right. Who was the founder in this land here? Jethro was. Well, Jethro was there, but who was... Where did Jethro come from? Alright? Who is these... Who are these people? Alright? These are Abraham's descendants by Keturah. Alright? Abraham's descendant of Jethro was a direct descendant of Abraham. Okay? A direct descendant of Abraham. So here is part of the family. Alright? Jethro. What does Jethro mean? Preeminence. What did Jethro do there in that land? What was his job? He was a priest. He was a priest. Alright, he was a priest in the land. Now maybe he had listened to Abraham's stories, huh? Alright. You learn something new? The land of Midian. Direct descendant of Abraham by Keturah. Alright? Now, B.C. 1840 was when all this started. Right around B.C. 1840, okay? Now, Midian, what does that name mean? Contention. Contention. While in the desert, in the land of contention, or Midian, Moses met the daughters of Jethro. All right, which means pre preeminence. He's a priest in the land who were herding sheep, <laughs> and he went with them. Now Jethro had several names. How many of you know what his names were? He had four different names in the Bible. How many of you knew that? Jethro had four different names in the Bible. Well, one of them was Jethro. One of them was Jether. Jether. 
J-E-T-H-E-R, all right, Jether, which means the same thing. And that is Ruel, Ruel, R-E-U-A-L, all right, or Raquel, okay, or Raquel. God is L. And then it says, and uh, he went with them, soon began herding sheep for Jethro, and later married one of the daughters. All right, what was the daughter's name? <coughs> now you have to remember these, these, these people had names like Indians. Huh? Zipporah. But what does Zipporah mean? What's her name? It just sounds like an Indian name. Little bird. Wobbler. Little bird. Wobbler. Wobbling. <laughs> In Lakota. Uh, little bird. What was her name? Uh, Zipporah. Zipporah. But Zipporah means a little bird. Okay? Little bird. Now, in the Bible, how many people, how many women meet their husbands at the well? Quite a few. Uh, just, just think about that for a while. Now let's go back to Exodus. All right, let's go to the book of Exodus and let's look at this just a little bit. All right. All right. Now remember that the word Ruel it means Jehovah is your friend or friend. Uh, Ruel it means friend and Rakuel means Jehovah is your friend. All right. Let's go back to, to Exodus now. The book of Exodus. <clears throat> we need to look at some things here. I jumped ahead on you. We're not supposed to start on that page. We're supposed to start on number 14. My page fell out. Now you've got a previews of coming attractions, okay? Let's go back to Genesis, or Exodus, that is, the first chapter. Now you know all about Moses' wife and all that. Let's go back, okay? We jumped ahead. And now it, it's chapter 14, number 1, okay? I apologize for that. I was working on that already and I left my marker there so I goofed. Chapter 1 verse 14? Yeah, chapter 1 of Exodus now. Uh, I don't know what page, it's number 1 on chapter 14, what page 42, is that? 42. 42. Okay, i got to write that down. Alright, now let's go back since I goofed up, but you did learn something over there. Alright. Exodus chapter 1. Let's look at this. Brother Wally, I know you're there. Yes. Exodus chapter 1. Let's start off here. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation, and the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and became as exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. All right. Now, that is fulfilling what? What was this? This fulfilled the promises. Promise Here we have the very promises of God that it, it is so beautiful what happened here. God got Abraham to leave the Ur of the Chaldees and go into the promised land, didn't he? Way back after the flood, right after the flood, we find out that one of Noah's sons sinned against Noah, did something disgraceful, and Noah did not curse him, but he cursed his son because he knew what their progeny would, would be like. Okay? And they were the sons of Canaan. And these became known as the Canaanites. 
this this curse was put upon them. By the way, a lot of the old uh, southern uh, uh, preachers at that time talked about uh, the black people being cursed with slavery, and this was a curse. This doesn't have anything to do with that at all. That was a bunch of baloney. Okay, uh, the the son that was cursed was not Ham. If he would have cursed Ham, he would have cursed himself. But what he did, he would curse his son. Canaan because he knew what their descendants would be like. They went into the land of Canaan and they settled that land and they built up orchards and everything else in there, but they were idolaters. They were godless, worthless people. Okay? And they had just tremendous practices of sinful things that they did. All Every part of their life was rotten. Okay? Uh, when you say if you if he cur since he cursed Canaan, he would have cursed himself too, wouldn't no. he? Wouldn't have, what's, what's if he difference? cursed his what's the difference? Okay, if he cursed Ham, he would have cursed all the whole lineage of Ham. But God, in His foreknowledge, knew that all the lineage would not be terrible people. But there was going to be a special group out of those of Canaanites, which would be a thorn in the flesh of Israel always. But he, they would go in this land, and he is going to curse. The curse was upon Canaan only. All right? Not on Ham, but upon Canaan, the Canaanites only. Because they were going to go in there. Not only that, but when they got into the land, we find out the sons of Jacob, when they went back over there in the land, what did the sons of Jacob start, do, start doing? They started marrying into the Canaanites. The Canaanites were a... Uh, uh, their gene pool wasn't too good, was it? So God killed two of... Judah's sons, remember, because of this. So he had to get them down to keep their gene pool pure. He had to get them and deport them. So he deported them down into Egypt. And God had told Abraham that their, your descendants are going to be down in Egypt for 400 years. This is all prophecy now. Way before it happened. So they went down there into Egypt. They multiplied greatly and they kept themselves separate from the Egyptians, because Egyptians, they won't have anything to do with them. Except for Joseph. And Joseph married the Egyptian girl, and he had several sons. It does not tell about any of his other children, except that he had them. Who were his sons? Joseph's sons. He from Navassa. Alright, but we find out that the first son was replaced when Jacob crossed his hands and he blessed the, the number two son more than number one because that's what we call in the Bible the rejection of the firstborn. Our first birth is no good. We must be born again. And that's what it teaches over and over again. Anyway, while down in there, they multiplied greatly. But they're going to come back in the land. When Joseph died, now you have to remember, for over 300 years, they did the bones... The mummy of Joseph was there, ready and packed to go for 300 years. Just think about that. That's older than this country is, people. America <coughs> is not as old as a nation as Joseph's bones were in Egypt waiting to be deported because of the promises of God. Okay? Just think about that. Because of the promises of God, and he said... Have me ready to go. So I don't know where they put him in what depository or whatever, but they kept Joseph's bone. <coughs> now when Jacob died, what did they do with him? They took him back into the promised land. They took him there in Hebron, and they buried him in the cave of Machpelah. And he's there today. And so was Joseph. Isaac there too? Or not? Isaac is there also. Alright? They're all there in that cave. Now, here we are. Now God is fulfilling His promises. Israel is becoming a mighty nation in Egypt. That's kind of like the Lord's people are doing in the world today. Hopefully, many people will be saved. Even in the tribulation period after the rapture of God's people and the church, there's going to be a great multitude saved even during that period of time. All right? Now let's go on a little bit further. The, the, the promises of God are being fulfilled. Now, God used Hitler, didn't he? God 
use Luther. Luther <coughs> set a program that it was a Jew-hating program. He called, when Luther <coughs> was the head of the Lutheran church in Germany, he called for the extermination and the capture and incarceration of every Jew in that country. Hitler fulfilled it. Now I know somebody got in trouble for saying this here a while back politically. All right, John McCain, he didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore after he said this. But God used Hitler to get Israel back in the land. That's a fact. That's a historical fact. All right? Now verse 9, or 8 that is, verse number 8. Who's got that? Randall, are you over there? No, not yet. Uh, you, have you got that, Tony? No, you can't see that. All right, we're praying for her eyes. Uh, Terry. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, All he right. said to his people. All right. Now the Hiscus kings came in there, and then uh, they were driven out about 1580 B.C. The Hiscus kings were 1730 B.C. to 1580 B.C., by the way. Number nine. Go ahead, Terry. Read that real loud for us. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. All right. They've become mightier, and there's more of them than we are. So we got a problem. we got a fifth column. A fifth column. You know what the fifth column is? That's where you invade a country, not with an army, but with people. And you build up the great forces within the borders, and then if something happens, you've got problems. That uh, is something kind of like that's happened here, and a little bit. All right. Uh, bro <laughs> uh, brother uh, Floyd, number 10. Uh, come let us deal shrewdly with, shrewdly with them. Lest right. they multiply, and if war befall us, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. All right. Now, let's deal craftily. Let's deal... Now, this is kind of like that word, Nahash. Let's deal craftily with them, deceitfully with them. All right? Lest they multiply, and in the event of war, they also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us, and they depart from the land. We don't want to lose this labor force. All right? We don't want to lose this labor force. we got a great labor force here, free labor. Number 11, and God said before this that this was going to happen, didn't we? Are you there, uh, Fernando? Yeah. Number 11. So they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labor, and they built the, the feral storage cities. Uh, I don't know what that is. A python? Python, python and, Ra and, and Ramses. Ramses. All right. So they built these great cities. Those cities of Ramses and Python are basically, they're still there today. You can go see where they were. And guess who built them? These slaves did. All right? Now, history confirms the Bible. If you got the Book of Mormon, history is not going to confirm it. You're going to have problems. So with DNA too. All right. Number 12. Number 12. Go ahead there, Brother... Uh, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread out. So they were in the so that they were in the dread of the sons of Israel. All right. Now they uh, they put them under hard labor, and they would want to work them so hard they didn't have time to multiply, so to speak. <laughs> it didn't work. They multiplied even more. And it said, and they spread out or they grew in the land. No matter what they're doing, God is blessing these people. No matter how hard their labor, how hard the time, God is blessing them. Under great affliction. In, the, in, in church history, in church history, the more God's churches were persecuted, the stronger and the more doctrinally sound they were. That's historical fact. And then number 13. Uh, are you there, young man? Yes. Oh, yes. And the Egyptians ruthlessly made the sons of Israel serve. They embittered their lives with harsh service in clay and bricks and all manner of service in the field and all their service, wherein they rigorously made them serve. All right. They rigorously imposed upon them. 
imposed upon them. They just kept trying to work them to death. Trying to work them to death. Number 15, uh, uh, Rex, are you there? And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shiphrah, and the name of the other was Kua. Boy, we've got the name of these women. God saw fit to put them in his Bible because they stood up. All right? Now, Pharaoh, all right, the king of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh spoke to the Hebrew midwives, and one of them's name was uh, uh, Shiphrah, and the other's name was Puah. All right, here we have these. They were probably the head midwives, okay? They were the head nurses, so to speak. Uh, number 16. Uh, go ahead, Rex. And he said, when, when you do the office of midwives and the Hebrew women, you see them open the stool. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. That's basically what Luther called for in Germany. Luther called for every male to be sterilized and the females to be just not used at all. I mean, completely. Do. If you want to get rid of these people, it, 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 uh, Luther called for exactly what Pharaoh did here. Exactly. All right. They got to have slaves. All right, they got to have slaves. They can always use these women for concubines. Number 17. Number 17, this is good, Brother uh, Wally. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. All right. You know... You're not going to overcome God, are you? You're not going to overcome His promises. I don't care what, how wicked a country is or whatever. God's going to get His way. He's going to have His eternal purpose. But these girls broke the law. These girls broke the law. They put their, their lives on the line, didn't they? But they knew better. They knew that God was blessing these Hebrew people. What does the name Hebrew mean? What's that name mean? Huh? Anybody remember? I, I, come on, I've told you before. From beyond the river. Alright, that's what it means. The people from beyond the river, Tigris and Euphrates is what it's talking about. Because they came all the way over. Sister, uh, brother, uh, brother Jim, this is type of abortion, huh? Yeah, well, not really abortion. They, they let them have the kids. They found out whether it's a male or a female and that was the end of it. Killed them. What they actually would do is throw them in the river. They would be croc feed. All right? Crocodile feed. They were going to feed the crocodiles and the fish. All right? Feed the fish. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and let the boys live? Now let's look and see what verse 19 says there, uh, Randall. The midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife can get to them. All right. Now they didn't need. No. How many of you are, uh, have you been around cattle and horses and sheep? Hmm? A little bit. Well, some, but not. All right. <coughs> For 200 years, you know when the uh, uh, Spanish came over here, they left a wild cow here. The Texas Longhorn. That was the Spanish Longhorn is what it actually was. They left these cattle here. They took over the range. They multiplied greatly. I'm going to tell you something. A Texas a Longhorn, never. you don't ever have to pull a cow. You don't ever have to help them calve. Well, the people, uh, they bred that out of them. They brought in the Herefords. They brought in the Black Angus, the Red Angus. They brought in all of these. And guess what happens? Out on the open range, many Herefords die in birth. The calf dies and they die. So now, <clears throat> they said, well, out in the ranges, out in the rough ranges and the open ranges like this, you know what they're doing to make them able to calf? They're breeding them longhorns back into them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that brings us that longhorn cattle. That's a wild cow. Man created perfect. Man created angels. But God created the longhorn. All right. And the guy, and they take care of themselves. They will take care of themselves. And then God was blessing these Hebrew women because they gave birth like longhorns do. They didn't need anybody to pull the cow. All right, they could just let's have the cow, have the child. They give birth before we get to them. They were afraid anyway. They weren't going to do it. Even the ones that they assisted, they didn't kill. Verse number twenty. Verse number twenty. Sister Andino. <coughs> Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. They were, they were mighty. They had, they had a, a great, they were strong, and they, they were many of them. They were strong, and it was a lot of them. Verse number 21, uh, uh, Brother Mike. And it came about because the midwives feared God, that he established households for them. All right, he gave them, he blessed them materially. And he blessed their households. They had children. And they had health. Alright? This is not this is not like Joel o Joel Olstein is preaching, this health and welfare business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they were being blessed by God. Alright? It's a wonder he hadn't got on this one. Number twenty two. Number twenty two. Uh, brother uh, Mike. The Pharaoh commanded all of the all of his people saying every son who is born you are to cast into the Nile and every daughter you are to keep alive alright since we can't trust the midwives <coughs> now I'm going to put out an edict if I see a male child uh, squalling we're going to go jerk off his diaper and look at him and see if he's a male or a female and if he's a male out in the river he goes that's over with. We're going to stop this situation. Now it gets real serious. Real serious. All right. Brother uh, David. The only David I got. <laughs> All right. Two and one. Well, I don't have another David. No, that's John. Oh. That's Dr. John. John there. The that's David right. always said that. All right. <laughs> he replaced that other David. It's Dr. John there. Go ahead, David. The only David I got today. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hit him for three months. All right. Now she just said, this is a beautiful boy. I can't kill him. I just can't do it. So she hit him. For three months she hit him. Alright? Didn't have him out in the open. Didn't let anybody see him. That he was alive or whatever. She's hiding this child. Because they were going to check him all out. Remember that? Now number three. Number three. Go ahead then. But when she could hide him no longer, she got him a, a wicker basket and covered it over with tar and pitch. Then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. All right, now what does she do here? Three months she follows <coughs> and she tries to, to hide this child. But in the end, how many of these uh, these are papyrus? This is what they made paper out of, by the way. They took these papyrus reeds and they made uh, baskets out of them. How many little children do you think floated down the river in these baskets before him? Thousands, because that's what they did. They had, they were ordered to expose them to throw them in the Nile, and I'm sure that they didn't just throw them in the Nile. They made other little baskets. It talks about in history. It talks about this happening that many of the wicker baskets were going down the the papyrus reed, and of course the great fish would come up in the crocodiles and grab them because they knew after the first year that there was something in there that was good to eat. All right. So in the end, they did like everybody else. They exposed their child. But God wanted this child. So now let's look and see what happens here. Number four. Number four. Uh, Brother Mike. And his sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Alright. Now, by the way, let's go on down in our in our lesson now, we just got a few minutes left, but let's look on, 
on page 42 in your syllabus. Why were the children of Israel placed in bondage? Because they came great in number, and it was a fifth column, right down our fifth column. They feared that they could be invaded. Invaded. Number two, what did Pharaoh command in order to reduce the number of the Hebrews? That he said, kill all the Hebrew, or Exodus 1 and verse 15, he said for them to kill all of the, the, the sons and save the daughters. Number three, describe the action of the Hebrew midwives who feared God. Exodus 1 and 17, they will not obey the commandment of the king. Number four, briefly describe the birth protect, protection of Moses. Moses' mother hid him for three months, Exodus 2, 1 and 2. And then she placed him in a, a papyrus basket, just like all the other mothers had, and sent him down the river. But I think they sent him with prayers, all right? Moses' mother's name was what? Huh? Miriam. His mother's Funny name. Enough. Miriam was a daughter. Uh-huh. Miriam was a daughter. All right. Now, you're going to have to look hard and heavy in the Bible for these names because they're not right here. It doesn't even mention their names, by the way. Brother... Uh, how did Aaron escape? That's what I want to know. Aaron, yeah. Evidently, he, he was older or younger, probably older. He was probably an older brother. Okay? <laughs> and the, the edict hadn't been given when Aaron was there. That's that's all we can figure out. Aaron was probably the older son. Okay? Now, his mother's name was Jochebed. Alright? Jehovah is honor. That's what her Joseph. name is. Jehovah is honor. What's her name? Jo Jochebed. Jochebed. J-O-C-H-E-B-E-D. Jochebed. Numbers 2659 where you're going to have to go to get that. Alright? And uh, her, his father's name was Amram. Amram. And Amram means exalted people. These names means a lot of it. How many of you ever watched The Little Rascals? How many of you, come on you guys, how many ever watched The Little Rascals, the movie? Yeah. Now they had a person in there by this girl's name. Alright? That is a boy. And I don't know whether you know what this name means, but this is what it means, all right? Miriam means fatty. Fat girl. <laughs> That's what it means, fatty. That's what her name was. His sister's name was Fatty or Miriam. Now, back in those days, men liked fat women. They did. Because they were healthy looking. They didn't want some skinny, bony-looking woman. They wanted one that had meat, meat on them, and so calling her fatty was not an insult. It was a compliment. All right? It was a compliment. Remember that guy. She had enough to eat. Yeah, she had plenty to eat. All right? All right, his sister's name was Fatty or Miriam. All right? Her name means fatty, thick, or strong. Exodus 15, 20. Now, you've got to look far for these. Numbers 26, uh, 59, Exodus 6 and 20, and uh, Exodus 15 and 20 is where you're going to find these. And his brother's name was Aaron, which means what? What does Aaron mean? Come on, Aaron. That means enlightened. All right, enlightened. Or illumination. Exodus 4, 14 and 4, 27. So now see, I chased all these names down for you so you didn't have to. Sister Andiva. What Jochebed means? Uh, Jochebed? Jochebed means Jehovah is honor. Our honor to Jehovah. All right. So there's where we're going <coughs> to quit for today. All right. His sister, Miriam, stood at a distance to find out what would happen. And now we're going to uh, go back into the, the story next week. And we'll start at Exodus 2 and verse 5. That's where we're going to be. All right. Thank you for your attention today. I hope you learned something from it, even though I jumped far ahead to begin with. I apologize for that. But uh, we got it done. <coughs> Brother David. Oh, yeah. We should.
go home and watch the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I'll go home and watch the Ten Commandments, and then we'll correct it. <laughs> because I want to tell you something. There's a lot of mistakes in there. They needed a scholar to go along with that one. Well, all of those Hollywood uh, Bible stories are, are lacking. <laughs> yeah, by the way, if you want any of the, the doctrines of the Bible, I've got them on DVD. I've got them on CD. Also, if you missed some of those, if you didn't get all of them before, I've recorded them again. I'm doing every class, instead of having two or three classes on one doctrine, I'm doing one, one doctrine per class. And so each class is a total different thing. So if you want any of those, I've got them. And again, uh, the, the lessons by Dr. Boyd Chastain, the debate, I've got one set of them left. Uh, there are four of them for twenty-five dollars. So Jim, All right. That, yes. The, the doctors of the Bible is that the whole doctor book? I, I'm still teaching that, but uh, uh, it's so far. I think I think tonight is the tenth class, and I'm going to be the doctrine uh, of uh, the creation of man, his creation and fall. That's what I'll be doing this morning and this afternoon. Yeah. Brother, but if you want any of those, I've got them. I'm trying to make them more condensed this time than I ever did before. And still try to cover the, the, yeah. the information for the day. Okay, in our prayer list today, we have uh, Linda would like prayer for uh, Dan and Shelly Holt for the loss of their mother. And Wally would like us to lift up Elfrida to strengthen her legs. 